I just kind of was curious as to, you know, kind of what some of your inspirations were for writing the script and I guess actually in general, just as a filmmaker and, you know, writer director, like, <clears throat> and then also specifically with Sim, like, what would you say? Is... Yeah. Yeah. So writer. Okay. So, um, you know, in general, uh, you know, I love Hitchcock. Uh, I love Alfred Hitchcock. Um, you know, for him as a director, he was so prolific. I mean, I think he did 53, he directed 53 movies, which is insane. You know, that's incredible. And, and I think for me, it's like, I want to, if I can get to the point where I'm writing and directing at least one movie a year, I think that would be a narrative feature. I think that would be the dream. And also like producing other things and directing other projects, which Cat Town and stuff, a documentary where, you know, is also out, you guys need to check out as well. Um, so, uh, but influences on this movie, I, you know, because Reicher was all handheld, right? It was all handheld. I love, my style has always been like, I love handheld. I hate tripods, da, 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 da. And I'm like, you know what? But there's movies that are shot entirely on tripods that are really beautiful, really cool, really still. Um, if you look at like, you know, uh, like a Paul Thomas Anderson film or something like that, or, you know, I'm getting kind of pretentious though. And I, I wanted a new challenge. It, you know, it's something I'm like, okay, you know what, what if for this, it's almost all sticks on sticks, you know, on tripod. And so I kind of wanted something like that, more still, like less movement, more kind of off-putting angles, uh, sym symmetrical shots, you know, and something that we kind of worked together on. Mm -hmm. And you definitely accomplished, you know. Uh, and then also like, you know, I like motion. I like mo moving with camera, especially with chase scenes. You want the camera to move, you want it to, the audience to feel like they were, were on a chase before they're being chased and so uh things like that i think um yeah and, and and writing directing is an interesting thing because um i guess i'm learning there aren't as many of us out there you know um hitchcock only pretty much solely directed his movies i mean he would write out parts and he would revise scripts but he would typically hire a writer to write it and I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I, to me, a movie is so personal. It's hard to just purely direct, I think, something for at least for me. Um, you know, I could see myself producing another director's vision or, or helping bring someone else's vision to, to light. But I don't know. Maybe I'm going. Am I answering any of this question? I, no, I this know. is a good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I just, love, I mean, I love movies and, and like Blade Runner 2049, you know, I remember you're asking me like, <laughs> like what, like what movies should inspire it, you know, and I'm like naming off like, you know, like the Oscar winning cinematographer <laughs> shots. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, no pressure, Mario. Just, oh, yeah, just yeah. accomplish his, you yeah, know, what he's doing. Yeah, just copy Roger Deakins. Yeah, and, Roger you know, Deakins, like, yeah. Yeah, my first narrative feature <laughs> film. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, um, yeah, with that, like, I really wanted that fun challenge, and, and, and this is a great opportunity for it, and it can really set the tone and really set, uh, you know, in, in something where, you know, I was kind of always afraid of this on um, sticks, and I see a lot of, oh, God, I see a lot of independent movies that are just on sticks, and they're god-awful. They're terrible. They're terrible, you know, and it's like, it's like the plain, regular tripod shot and there's like two characters in frame they're, they're like sideways talking to each other and there's like nothing interesting happening you get bored easy you know and it's just so lame but you know we switched it up a whole bunch for this and and also the edit as well and like also someone that you know i edit a bunch as well so it's like you can think of it it makes it easier that way you know but um yeah with this like i was having fun with it like you know i realized writing I, I have a lot of fun with it because I have a lot of fun with these characters and it's something that to me it kind of comes naturally to me and it's kind of annoying it might be annoying to, for people to hear but I, I just I like doing this it's almost I don't know it's like it's not easy but it's like it's not easy but it's, it's just a matter of sitting down and doing it you know and once I sit down and do it it's like oh my gosh I'm having so much fun and with these characters and like picturing this James Dean wannabe guy that's like trying to get his ex-girlfriend back kind of but not really 
you know, people like that, I'm like, oh, it'd be kind of funny if he had his friends. You know, I'm like, oh, it'd be kind of funny this, and like, what could be suspenseful for, with this? And this is kind of a unique film where it's it's not necessarily a thriller, it's not necessarily a comedy, it's not really a, an adventure film. I don't know, it's like kind of a lot of different things in one. Um, but like a lot of it is, you know, I put into pay, you know, I want to see, you know, I kind of take a seedling of an idea of something that really happened and then just kind of run with it. So, uh, and then I love movies. I love watching movies at all times. And, and I was actually watching several movies um, on mute to, have, to kind of get the, the shots, you know, and, and working with you and talking to you with, with that, because that, that, that really helps the tone, develop the tone. And if you can, uh, Hitchcock said, if you could visually watch a movie, um, you should be able to know what's going on without hearing any of the dialogue. So I was like, okay, that's kind of a challenge. That's really a challenge. And, mm -hmm. and something that, you know, I'm hoping to accomplish with this film uh, is that people can just visually watch and be like, wow, and just kind of being captured by the, vi the, by the images, yeah. you know. So there's some really cool images. I mean, you know, from the trunk, the classic trunks shot where you see Todd um, and then Another Todd, like one of my favorite shots of the movie is her running outside of the Christmas trees. The rack focus to her, you know, he opens the thing, rack focus to her, rack back to the silhouette of him and him, you know, like, I love stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so, and then working with you, you know, Mario has a really good eye, you know, like literally he only has one eye that, that can see, you know? <laughs> He's not kidding. I'm not that. kidding, yeah. And you know, Mario's always kind of like this. I'm always like, why is Mario like squinting? He's like, well, because he can only really see one eye, right? Like got one eye. And, but yeah, like Mario exactly. has, you have this natural eye, you know? He has, you have something, like he has something that can't be taught, guys. You can't really teach it. I mean, and then also you know every single thing about uh, aperture, ISO, frame rate, shutter speed, all that, all that stuff, which I should know at some point, and I still don't know. I still, you know, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a director of photography for, as well. Like I could say that I have a decent eye when it comes to different angles and stuff, but you know, you really brought it, brought it. You know, so thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely collaborative. You know, like as far as like, you know, decisions on you know where to put the camera, but you were really cool with just kind of letting me, you know, do basically whatever my instincts were telling me to do. And then <clears throat> if I wasn't sure about something, you could jump in and, you know, really, you know, add your um, expertise to it. And so I think we worked really well in that regard. <clears throat> and I will say visually, like, the thing the most attracted me to this script and this story was the fact that it kind of defied conventions of like genre. You know, it's like a movie that's like, is it a comedy? Is it a thriller? Is it like, you know, and so I think that was kind of where I, you know, tried to incorporate some more high key lighting into some of the dramatic scenes. So it was kind of like to try to, <clears throat> you know, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything like that, you know, with the lighting and the, the way the film looks, but just, um, you know, basically making it uh, a little bit different than a typical thriller film, which would be very low key, kind of shadowy. Um, and then, <clears throat> yeah, it's like, it's like, how do you make something that's broad daylight, a beautiful cabin, beautiful, you know, beautiful location? How do you make that kind of have a little bit of a sinister tone? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like you can't quite put your finger on exactly the genre, and so. <clears throat> I think we got some different looks and I tried to, you know, make Brooke look as soft and as possible just because I kind of like the way the old films are in that regard where like it's so obvious that they're lighting the leading lady differently than everybody else. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. She's like glowing. Like <laughs> yeah. everyone's like glowing. And then yeah. like everyone else looks like everyone looks like crap, you know, criminals. You know, she, yeah, like yeah. shadowy criminals. And yeah, and she's just like, <laughs> yeah. So I kind of actually like it. I think it was kind of charming. So I kind of tried to, to achieve a little bit of that too and <laughs> yeah. yeah and i think brooke just has that like classical hollywood like starlet look anyway you know so it was i mean it obviously was easy for me to yeah you know? it's <laughs> like it's kind of hard to make her look bad you know and uh yeah shout out brooke good job you know <laughs> like but you know a, a bunny makeup artist um she was uh it, it was almost annoying to the point where i'm like brooke like gosh damn it like we would mess up her hair and it was still like magically flow 
and look perfect in a take. I'm like, gosh, you know, she's supposed to be four days in of a, a kidnapping, you know, without a shower, right? And her hair is just kind of naturally, you know, but, but it, anyway, that was like, well, that's kind of a good problem to have because I think, uh, you know, as a leading lady, um, she's really going to bring in, I think, the audience and, and uh, you know, you care about this girl, like, you know, you, you, but she's, she's a strong female character, you know, too. She's not just this dumb, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a line that's like, oh, I know you're dumb blonde, but you're not a stupid one. I know that you're um, a dumb blonde, but come on, you're not a stupid and you're a prick. Yeah, she might be this like dumb Instagram model, you know, on the surface, but she's actually really smart. She's actually, uh, she stands up for herself and she, you know, she saves herself essentially, you know, by her her winning, her, her cunning and just kind of manipulating uh, Mike's character, Dan, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, so so like, so then, and then so the contrast, so, so you, you know, you wanted to have that classic look for, for Brooke, but then what was that like with Mike? having the villain essentially yeah well i mean mike definitely kind of has that kind of like really unique look too like and he's something dark goes on inside of him like, <laughs> <laughs> and it just like Shut up, mike. <laughs> so like i think it was just such an interesting contrast that was just naturally there like that they they just brought that to the screen without me having to do anything you know <laughs> yeah so, yeah yeah i don't know if it's the way his hair you know kind of blocks light from his face or just these little things that just like really worked out you know <laughs> so. yeah he has that you know and he says he, he gets he gets kind of typecast as a villain or as a, a wild west villain because he's got the long hair and he you know he got he has the muscles we had to kind of tone down his muscles a bit you know um but like he has that kind of look and he could really make it look you know intimate but he could also be like the soft you know nice guy type look too as well and this is why you're almost thinking like oh he's is he on her side is he really trying to uh is you know is he this middleman that's just kind of caught in this awkward situation um so you know you wanted someone i wanted someone that wasn't entirely you know just pure evil looking you know and, and someone that's kind of charming too like he's got that charm as well so you know and visually showing that um yeah, like with, with the shots and, and, and all that. Um, uh, and then he had the mask on too for like, you know, the first quarter. True, so yeah. So, so first quarter, solid. Definitely. Yeah, and that's hard. To, like, how do you act with a mask on? Mm -hmm. And the poor guy said he couldn't really breathe. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> sorry, Mike. <laughs> that must have sucked. That was awful. Yeah, man. And those masks, like, those Halloween masks, they smell, you know, they have a certain smell. I mean, we all have worn a halloween mask breathing that plastic you're breathing rubber in the plastic and everything else or whatever you know <laughs> can be good you know so um but there was funny times when he was like vaping and like the smoke would go through the mask and like that's like <laughs> but uh yeah i mean <clears throat> so yeah so so tonally visually uh, and also uh ramos oil scene let's talk about the ramos oil scene yeah um yeah so the first thing you told me to do is watch the blues brothers <laughs> yes and so i checked out that intro you know and with uh the prison shots and everything and and then so that's kind of what we were trying to uh you know accomplish and um i mean ramos oil is so cool there's so much symmetry and just like like oil tanks and trucks like, all lined up all perfect and that classic logo, safety first. <laughs> yeah, and dot, 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 and always. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dylan told me about that. He said they had that company vote uh, for like their slogan, and that was number one. Dylan was like, really, guys? Really? You know, but it, it was perfect. It worked out really perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you couldn't have <laughs> you designed that better for what we ended up shooting. And like, it was great. And yeah, it was just like, just kind of magical the way you know the shadows on the inside of the warehouse were just beautiful the you know the super high contrast of when you know everything was shut down and closed down and the, the garage doors open and <clears throat> we able to do some cool silhouette stuff and just like it was just a kind of a playground of like images really so it was cool 
And then I, I actually loved Rekha, Rekha Ali's uh, phone scene. Yeah, I was just about to say. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, yeah, that scene. And like, he's got the glove on, on wearing the phone, you know, with the phone. In the river in the background, the, the American River, or Sacramento River. One of the two. Yeah. I was kind of confused. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, Sacramento, I think it's Sacramento River <laughs> yeah. uh, in the background. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just, it's so cool. Like, and it has that, that tone, like, you know, the bridge behind him and. Oh yeah, um, it just created so much cool atmosphere and just the vibe of every location. You know, was it just added? I think so much more to the um, the overall film. It was just awesome, and you know, I definitely have to give some credit to Rucker Rucali with some of his like. I mean, <clears throat> it was almost uh, Brando esque the way he um, basically found those gloves. You know, um, which. I believe, you know, reminds me of On the Waterfront, you know, when Marlon Brando was playing with the gloves and, you know, it was basically like the birth of the method acting, you know, and Rucka Rucka Ali did that, his version of that, you know. <laughs> That's <so>. right. <laughs> yeah, he was holding onto the gloves, he kept them, and then for later on, he used them again. Yeah. He had the plastic and, and he had yeah. the prop phone, the smashed phone, which was my phone uh, that I, <laughs> that had been smashed uh, from years, you know, that, that actually, fun fact about that prop, Smash phone is I wrote rideshare on that phone. So yeah. Really? Yeah. You wrote, I wrote rideshare on, the, on a phone? On a phone. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the Beverly Hills library. Uh and I was just on my phone. Which is it was like Samsung Galaxy S7, guys. Like not like the top not this isn't like you know the the latest and greatest iPhone 25, you know. Um yeah. So anyway, but so that's kind of like a nod, and and I so I have a weird affinity for this phone. You know, I don't know whatever. But he kept track of the props too, and that like for me that's like because we don't have a prop master on set, guys. This is a low budget indie filmmaking, and for me to think about a million different things like locations, props, crew, cast, uh, uh, you know, everything else that's happening on set, uh, what we need to knock out today, the what time everything is. And then it's like, oh shit, I forgot one prop, which I pro- I forgot my, I was supposed to have this big gold chain necklace for my character. I completely forgot it. I forgot the drone, you know, just haphazardly, just not <laughs> thinking, you know, but but someone, when someone like Rucka Rucka Ali is like, oh, you know, I've got these props, I've got these props, you know, or Rucka, and, and I was like, oh no, yeah, I'll hold on to them. Yeah, okay, I'll keep track of them. You know, and I love that, you know, it's like, hey, so he can keep track of it, he can hold on to it. And then now he has it. Like, oh, do we have this? And does the character have it? And he had him, and no problem. And I don't. There's one less thing for me to worry about, you know, or to think <laughs> about. So that makes things <clears throat> that make, that makes things uh, fun. So yeah. So let's talk about when. I guess the opening scene with her rolling around. Like, what was that like? With with. Uh, yeah, that was that was really uh, that was a really exciting scene to shoot, just because you could kind of see. The opening in the film unfolding and you could just visualize it so well um you know with uh you know a lot of your ideas about just kind of like these super wide angles and you're kind of like not really seeing her yet like you're seeing her from a distance she gets out of the car and <clears throat> it was just uh you know kind of some of those classic you know we got some of the classic tracking shots that you see kind of in like a john carpenter movie or something or like you know, this kind of steady cam feel where you're like following a character and you know something really bad is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. Like, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> like, so. yeah, what, what gave it that idea? What gave me that idea? Yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, like probably, yeah, I mean, it would, it would be like the shadiest, but it's like broad daylight, you know, and that's part of the thing. So it's like, so we shot that, I mean, we shot a lot of that scene, like high noon, like, yeah, you know, which it is was. like, was, you know, yeah. filmmaking 101 is probably, they say what, they say never film at high noon, right? Yeah, but, it's just going to be crazy, you know, with the sun being your main source of light above, you're getting shadows under your eyes and, you know, you're getting, you know, all sorts of just crazy blown out highlights and stuff. But, you know, we just, I mean, and also keep in work. mind it was over 100 degrees. It was 105 or 108 <laughs> degrees uh, during the day, of middle of the summer, like hot August days yeah. in Sacramento. <laughs> like, exactly. it was super hot, like warm outside. Yeah, but it just worked, I think. You know, we made it work. And like something about the setting, it just, it was a high contrast, geometrical, like, you know, harsh setting so you know with at a 
you know, oil warehouse. So it just made sense, I think, and it worked out. And a lot of the movie was like that. A lot of it because of your planning, you know, because you broke everything down and planned when to shoot what, and which it all pretty much worked out. I mean, like you said earlier, like we finished it one day early. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, which that was a miracle. It was weird. It was it was almost like I was planning on this extra day, and I was like, okay, well, I have all everything planned for us to shoot out, but in case, in case we don't get everything, we have this extra day to, to film. But it, it ended up happening like that was just an extra day that we just could have just that we just hung out, hung out or whatever I think or you know we kind of got to sleep yeah. in for once yeah <laughs> yeah like I think day. we both slept in I think till one or something like that that day yeah yeah one. I was pretty groggy that day because I mean we were pretty much you know for the nine days of shooting like we would wrap maybe around one or two in the morning every day. You know, and then we would review the dailies, you know, and like we would like plan what we're gonna for the next, the next day. day. Yeah, yeah. And then we were the first ones up in the morning, yep. you know, for the next day. So <laughs> first, yeah, first there wasn't one. a whole lot of sleep. No, it wasn't at all. You know, but it's weird. It's like if something happens, at least for me, it's like this adrenaline kind of kicks in and I'm up, you know, I'm like just up, I'm ready to go and, you know, up, you know, at 7 a.m. And, yeah. you know, after going to bed at 4 or 5 a.m. Oh yeah, like every that. every night, yeah, and maybe the twenty bangs you were drinking each day. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's true. Yeah, the twenty bang, uh, bangs on set. Load. Like, yeah, sorry, <laughs> bang energy drink. You know, yeah, that definitely helped. Like, constantly barely eating. Like, yeah, we didn't even eat. I don't think. It, I think both of us. I think we had a combined one or two meals. I think per day. Yeah. Or no, no, per per the for the whole shoot. Yeah, we had a nice team bonding meal with like on day two or something or. And that was cool that like everybody, you know, we had the pasta and it was like a whole little family around the table and you know, you were blasting the Britney Spears or something. Oh, that's bro. right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're blasting. Yeah, I got on this Britney Spears kick like right before. I don't know why. I don't know. I get in these phases of life. And, uh, <laughs> but so that was nice to have that one meal and then and then uh, and Mike's bread was just that really was like sustained the whole crew. For oh, it mean, really was, did. Yeah, it really did. Like he had me at like, he's like, oh yeah, so I'll just bake some bread. I'm like, okay, that sounds great. You know, he baked this amazing jalapeno, it was like jalapeno cheddar, something like that. He'll it's probably oh, has a really fancy artsy name to it. It was delicious. Like best bread I've ever had. Like oh yeah, fresh baked, kneaded, you know, the dough made it, all of it. It was amazing. From scratch, yeah. yeah so. He's not only a talented actor, but he's a talented bread maker too, you know. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I know that was sustaining us. Like I was just buttering yeah. that up and like just, just taking a big piece of bread and keeping it eating, <laughs> yeah. wash it down with a bang and actually drink. And, <laughs> and just keep going. Yeah, just keep going. But I mean, I loved it because at the end of the day, we were just, you know, we could review the dailies and then maybe have a drink or two, you know, and just kind of unwind and. Oh, yeah, so. sitting out by the deck and uh, looking out on the Christmas tree farm. And yeah, it's just like, yeah. You can't beat it. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. we talk about the day, like we joke around about things that happened during the day, and then like just yeah. that was so cool. Like that was actually really awesome. And, yeah, yeah, there was some good bonding with John too, and um, yeah, and shout out Jamie John and, and James. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, yeah, you guys were great. Like they funny, had, and, you know, oh, everybody yeah. was just yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a great group. You know, you, I think you brought you know a lot of different personalities yeah, you know? yeah. It tends to happen yeah <laughs> but yeah it different works. unique personalities put together <laughs> but that's the thing is like you know it's it is interesting with a movie you know you need to have different characters and you need to have different personalities and um you know i was lucky i mean james helped out he was a production assistant on set he helped out uh with the blood and stuff and not only that he was in the movie as well he plays ned okay okay we can do this i I can do this. That's the fucking spirit. So like, you know, shout out to James and he did a great job. And, uh, you know, so we, so it's kind of, I guess, uh, if you guys are looking at like kind of lower budget filmmaking, like you can cast actors that can also help out on set too, you know, or everyone, everyone had multiple jobs essentially where we're doing, you know, um, but uh, yeah, we all did a great job and everyone was in on, on it, you know, and I, I think it's just something that when we're, 
pretty laid back guys, you know, for the most part, you know, I guess maybe I'm a lot less laid back maybe because you know, I had to, I was more stressed at, at a constant <laughs> level, but, but I mean, but I still, you know, I'm just having fun. And I think people know that even if I'm saying like, oh, that was terrible or that was shitty, like I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm just saying, Hey, we can, you know, we could do better. And then everyone else kind of brings it. And yeah, I know. think it brought out the best in people when you, you kind of get a little, uh, testy <laughs> you know you kind of like you know which is not very often but you know so when it happens you know it's like everybody knows like i gotta bring my a game you know it's like, <laughs> so, and that definitely happened a couple of times in some you know pivotal scenes where it's just i guess you, you just weren't seeing what you knew it could be unfolding like you want to talk about that a little bit yeah let's talk about that why not let me <laughs> Let's talk about that. I just want to take a second to thank our patrons on Patreon. Blina, 808 Water Wings, Tommy Sisson, Marissa Edens, Naftoli Hertz, and of course, Rideshare Lisa. Thank you all for the support. You guys are helping create this behind the scenes content and supporting the channel. If you haven't supported on Patreon, what are you waiting for? Guys, go to patreon.com slash Studios. We are looking at creating the greatest movie studio on the planet, one movie at a time. Every single dollar counts. So go to patreon.com slash Heyo Studios and support and you get behind the scenes pictures and videos and you are the first to see all our videos. Thanks again for the support in advance and I hope you're enjoying the content. Now on with the show. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I think I know the scene that you're referring to specifically, the, the, the number one scene that was like, it's such a pivotal scene is when Brooke is like, it was Brooke's scene of, uh, you know, he's basically, she has to convince him not to, you know, she has to convince him not to sell her as a sex slave, right? Which I think is like kind of a big thing, right? And, and you know, she kind of has to have a breakdown and has to be really kind of crying. It was just not, I just wasn't feeling it. Was, was that the scene you're referring yeah, to? Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it's just, we did a bunch of takes and I'm just like, I was, I was physically depressed, like just wind out of my sails. I'm like, if this scene doesn't work, the movie doesn't work. The whole movie is shot and it sucks. You know, like, no, but, but it's like you had, like you work so hard on the movie and, and it's like, you realize all these little things. And I'm like, you know, the details, the details, it's all about these freaking details. And if one detail's off or if one person's shitty, or if one scene's shitty and one pivotal scene, like we were allowed to have like some crappy scene, you know, or it was maybe some, I don't know. I don't want to have any crappy scenes, obviously, but but like, you know, um, something like a pivotal scene like that just wasn't happening, wasn't happening. And Brooke, uh, she's like, you know what? Like, well, let me, uh, she's like, let me go upstairs, right? Let me get my thoughts together or something. Like we, you know, we, we took like a 20 minute break, I think. And I'm like pacing back and forth or whatever. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm so mad. And I, I, you, you take it from there. <laughs> you take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think you just, you know, you, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, did you go up there and kind of like talk to Brooke? Or I think at yeah, some point. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. And I think she thought that I was like mad at her, which I'm not. I'm not, I wasn't mad at her at all. I was just like, you know, and, and it's tough as a, as a director, it's like, you kind of, you know, I don't always want to have to spell everything out. Sometimes I do have to spell everything out for the actor or, or sometimes it's not completely clear the emotion that they're trying to go for. Or, you know, someone as young as Brooke who maybe, excuse me, is like, thankfully she hasn't experienced like anything as serious, like, I, hopefully, I don't think Kidnapping. so. Like, anything as serious <laughs> as that, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of hard to put yourself in that frame set or my, set of mind and also like, keep in mind like, okay, your, your character has a child. You're never gonna see your child again. You're going to be shipped off and sold to God knows who to do God knows what to you. It's like, is this not an emotional moment? You know, and, and I was just like, you know, just kind of trying to tell her, I'm like, I'm like, you know, you, you could do it kind of, encouraging her and you know it's like whatever it takes for you to get there you know think about you know your pet dying or wh whatever it is like whatever it takes you know so you know but uh she had her own thing i won't say what it is what it was 
what it was. But hey, it worked. You know, whatever she did, she. You know, I think she said, uh, she's like, oh, I was just telling myself, you know what, I was, I'm, I'm sucking right now, but I can do a lot better. Like I can do. I know I got this. I can do a lot better. She like gave herself a pet talk, and then she thought about what would get her in that <laughs> frame set, which I kind of was thrown off by. But hey, whatever. Again, whatever it takes. Yeah, and it worked great. She, you know got in the scene and was just like super intense and emotional and and you know I guess I think like those are the really the rewarding moments when it's like you know I could just see you're just like your intensity is just getting higher and higher and then you right when you know you got the shot you know you got what you needed you got what you knew it could be you know it's like it's just like the best feeling right like it's just like yeah, you mean in general, like like this, or me specifically, yeah. or or you? yeah, yeah. I think, uh, well, you as the director is get, like you're kind of like leading the emotion, and I think like the crew, it, like we're kind of following, you know, like your uh, emotional gauge, you know. <laughs> so like, so we, you know, and that's that's kind of how you lead. Partly is like, you know, so it's motivational when we see you you know, not satisfied. And then we get it to the point where it's like, okay, now he's like, he's stoked. You know, we, like we got, we got what we, you know, Tremaine's happy. Now we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's good. I mean, that's really good. You know, I, I hope that we're all like, not just, oh, tr you know, like everyone is happy with their own work or what they're doing and everyone, everything's bringing to the table. But yeah, I guess for me, it's like that final, I guess, seal of approval, I guess. But but yeah, I mean, it got it went from something where like I was deeply depressed about the whole scene. I'm like, this whole movie's shot. It's not gonna work. We if we don't get, I mean, we got still have like, we still have like ten pages to shoot or you know whatever, like like a normal day or whatever. Or or, or, or no, was it the last thing that we were doing? I, I, I forget. It was toward the end, but we, I think we still had four or five had pages. Shoot, we had yeah. hours left, you know, <laughs> yeah. and like yeah. you can't just spend your whole day on one little scene, even at even if it is the most pivotal scene, because you've got other scenes to shoot. You got other characters coming in the next day. You got other, you know, there's so many things going on. And I, I but I came from being super depressed, super down. Oh, this isn't going to work. But how, how are we going to get this to work? To when she did bring it and she delivered, I actually had a tear in my eye. No joke. I, so so it it completely changed and like okay now I really felt that emotion. I feel like filmmaking is a feeling, guys. It's a feeling, and I want the. I don't want just things to happen or people to passively aggressively ha or passively have this movie on in the back, and I want people to be on the edge of the seat. I want them to be freaking watching this movie, being ha holding them, holding their attention the whole time, and I want all those caption capture all the. Uh, acting that that does that and that like that's the goal that we're going for so we got a lot of those moments and I feel like a lot of these actors really brought it with those scenes and especially those pivotal moments that are so crucial you know what? even if you did have a son you know what? fuck it fuck it let's say that you do have a son which which I do honest mistake you can just you can just let me go no I have a I can't let you go. Don't you understand that it's too late for you? We are too deep into this. Do you fucking get it? It's my son. It's too late. Mm -hmm. Um, like that's what you know. They, yeah. Then it's like yeah. yes. Like that yeah. is like the greatest feeling in the world. I feel <laughs> totally. Like. And there's a lot of those moments, I think, throughout where, you know, sometimes morale would be a little low, you know, here and there, you know. <laughs> For a certain <laughs> other reason, not just me, right? Like, not no, just no, me. No, yeah. no, 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 no. There were no, other reasons no, that no, morale no. was low. But. I mean, you know, it was just, it's, it's a long haul, you know, it's a lot to do to make a movie in nine days, you know, and sometimes it seems like, are we going to get to the rap party, you know? Yeah. Like, it's unclear. Like, we gotta got to keep pushing, you know? But then you get those big moments where it's like, we nailed it. Like, we, you know, like, and it just keeps you, like, it's just awesome. It's just a great feeling. You know, it's interesting. It's like, I, I'm always, I don't know, I'm like kind of superstitious with stuff. And, and um, you know, I, I, it's interesting because people ask about like a rap, an official rap party. Like, are we going to have a rap party? And, and I'm like... Uh, no, I'd like to me, I'm like, I'm like, we'll party when the movie's done 
and it's out and we're celebrating watching it, you know, like that's kind of for me because I feel like we're really, I mean, we definitely like, we did like, you know, hung out and, and, you know, had some drinks and talked about the whole movie. And that was amazing. That final night, <laughs> yeah. just me and you, that was amazing. Cause we were just like, just, <laughs> yeah. you know, after like unloading, you know, for, for nine days, like all your creative and mental and physical capacities like it's just so draining <laughs> it's weird it's only been two months since that two months it's that's only been crazy. two months i know it's crazy <laughs> but yeah so like i almost though you know i i've kind of had to detach myself and remove myself from the project just to let it kind of simmer and breathe what what we have going on and we're about to really just fully on full on attack it but uh with finishing it um uh but yeah i mean it's just like you know, for you, what was that like after? So like, you know, after we shot the whole thing and, you know, we had that, we got to sleep in that next day and then you went home the next day or whatever. And, and well, yeah, I think like for me, you know, it's all about like, you have a certain standard, you know, of what <clears throat> you're trying to uphold a certain standard of quality with the images and with like, you know, the stuff you're getting. Um, and I think like, I just looked back on it and I was like, you know what? I mean, I didn't have to compromise that much. Like, I feel really good about the fact that, you know, we, yeah, maybe there was, you know, one or two times where it's like, ah, oh, dang, I kicked myself. Like, I wish we would have been able to do this a little bit quicker. Maybe, you know, light would have been a little bit different or something, but for the most part, you know, when things were difficult, we pushed through and made it happen. And then, and a lot of the times things weren't difficult. Like we were able to really, you know, get it to look the way we wanted it to look, get it, you know, and do enough takes where we felt really good about it, I think. So that was my takeaway. It was like, I feel like we didn't have to compromise that much given the fact that it was a super tight schedule. I think we, you know, did really well. Yeah, to, yeah, you know, it was funny, like, we had several days where we were like, you know, we were like, God, I don't think we shot that much. Like, do we, are we getting this done? Are we doing this? Are we doing, you know, do we get enough? And, you know, then we've got the footage and it's like, okay, we got this scene, this scene, this scene, this scene, this scene, we got this other locations, other locations, other, there's other scenes, other, I'm like, okay, actually we shot a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> we shot a lot today, <laughs> you know, and it was weird. It's like, you get to the point where you're shooting so much that you don't even realize how much you're shooting. And then also compared to Hollywood productions or productions that have tens of millions of dollars and anyone and everyone at their disposal, and they take forever. They take, they film one to two pages a day, right? If they're lucky, two pages a day, if they're lucky, yeah. you know? So, you know, even with like as many characters that we have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's fast and efficiency, but not being able to compromise, still making something that's really good, something that you're proud of. And, you know, it's like, we all have that higher standard of, of we want it to be the best it can be. And I'm, we're obviously gonna make this movie the best it could be, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, you, you wanna like, I want to, uh, to say a complete cliche, but, but like, you wanna say at the end of the day, like, or at the end of the project, like, okay, we shot this, we did this, it's done. We're gonna make it now, it's finished, you know. Um, and yeah, and then have something that we're, that we're proud of. Then move on to the next one and do the next one, you know? So, and not just get so wrapped up on, on something or hung up on something or try to reshoot everything at all times, you know? It's like anything could ever been, mm -hmm. it could always been, you know, we could have always like, oh, it could have always been, a scene could have been written better or it could have been acted better or it could have been shot better or the sound could have been. Oh yeah, know, endlessly. Endlessly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, but it's like, we did pretty damn good yeah <laughs> i think like, totally yeah. toot our own horns but <laughs> but you know e each of us need all of us and and the, yeah like you crush it with with filming and you know and uh yeah everyone brought their a game and tried you know pushed really hard no one was half-assing anything no I don't think no we were at any weren't. point that's what the beauty of it was yeah everyone was given 110 percent and and uh you know yeah i mean every time we would watch the dailies at the end of the day it was just like this is exciting, like this is amazing, you know? And it's like, you know, ever since we went to film school, you know, it's like, this is the feeling we've been chasing, you know, and now it's here. Yeah, <laughs> totally, yeah, completely. Which I didn't get into film school, he did. 
right? Yeah, so yeah, that's the story for another time. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's something that years back, I mean, we met in college and always wanted to make movies and we made it together, right? Our first feature film together. Exactly, yeah. And we never let anything stop us, you know, even back back then, you know, it's just like, let's just make the movie, you know? And no excuses. Yeah, know? right. And, and that, I think that's why we got along too. It's like, you're just always just, we're making it and we're not just... Yeah, you can't make you can you can make excuses or you can make movies, but you can't make both. You really can't, you know. And and then also like in every day that you realize how important it is, like you know. And if you drop the ball, it sucks. Like for me, I dropped the ball on having a, a gold chain for my character. But it, you know, stuff stuff like that where, you know, hey, whatever, it works out. I think you seemed like a douchebag. Plenty. I think it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty clear. <laughs> I don't think without you need it. Yeah, I think you can nail that, that tone pretty well. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, actually, I have a question for Bunny. Um, you know, maybe we can get her on one of these uh, things. And But, like, every makeup artist always does this. And they always darken my eyebrows because my eyebrows are very light. But they put, like, dark eyebrows on me so you see my character has these like dark, it looks like i'm wearing like why am i wearing why do i i don't know anyway but i looked extra douche i mean wearing the shirt that says bad boy on it like, <laughs> yeah, and those huge earring fake earrings and you know yeah that was a fun that was it's a fun character to play <laughs> yeah, but good. but yeah i mean you know we um yeah i guess uh i guess okay what, what were like your three biggest takeaways from this movie Maybe lessons learned or something that you could apply for next time? Or... Um, biggest takeaways would be, um, for me, just, uh, I think to go back to what we were saying earlier, you know, definitely one of the biggest takeaways was just, you know, do your best with what you have and you know put as much creativity into it as you can and and then um you know try to compromise as little as you you know as you have to but um accept um you know that you're doing your best and um you know if your heart is in it and your passion is in it then you know you're doing everything you can do and and then you know hopefully people will like it and you know so um I think, you know, you definitely taught me that, you know, that to not let perfectionism get in the way because it, it can stop you from, you know, really accomplishing the end goal. So, yeah, I mean, because you have a very high standard for what you want to accomplish, right? Like you, you have a very, you know, you want it to look great. Obviously, you don't want it to look crabby. This is your first narrative feature film. You don't want it to be, you don't want to just like, you know, yeah yeah I don't, i'm not trying to phone it in you know i really yeah i mean this is this is huge for me there's such a big opportunity to yeah. be able to have this opportunity you know so yeah, yeah i wanted to look as good as, as possible and match the content so that it's really something unique and different and you know something that people really like are on the edge of their seat and they want to you know and it's like how you envisioned it on the script and like yeah, yeah you know it's so crazy it's like it's like you would, I envisioned it, you know, it's, it's so, it's interesting, you know, it's like I envisioned, because I envisioned the characters, and I could see the characters first, and then, you know, then I see the character, then I see the location, and, but then, like, everything else has exceeded all of my expectations and vision, you know, and then it's like, but, you know, you think about something, you think about the characters, you think about something you're writing, and then you see it, and then it's like, wow, it's so cool, like, I don't know, I love it, I don't know, it's just so cool, like, yeah, but, like, I always have this, like, distinct, when it's, I guess, starting with the characters, and I have this distinct, distinct vision of it, you know, we were looking at, uh, over uh, the audition tapes that we got for Brooke and for Mike and everything, and, like, to me, it's like, there were ones that were close, they were very close, right, but they're not, they weren't, you know, they weren't Brooke, they weren't Mike, you know, and, and it was, like, um, finding those people finding those you know which is so crazy it's so weird it's like you write something that you made up you know i made up this thing you know it's like it's like you know anyone can do it you know it's like you could write some crazy character in your head and you know it when you see it right like 
So it just always boggles my mind that like a lot of writers, directors, they have someone else cast their movie or a casting director cast, you know, it always boggles my mind because I'm like, don't you have a specific, you know, actor in mind? I don't know. It's, it's like, it, I feel, I feel, uh, I don't know. Anyway, the bottom line is, is that <clears throat> when you have that, I had that, I had a pretty specific vision with the characters. Um, but like, again, like everything exceeded my expectations, like times 10, you know? So, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, <that's, laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm really excited to see the final, how it all <laughs> turns out. And I know. And this is so crazy. <laughs> it's like, we're, you know, it's not done yet. And, you know, I, but I, I think it's kind of cool, like seeing us at this phase. Yeah, totally. This is the start of something. It feels like that, you know, like start something big. Yeah, it does too, doesn't it? Yeah, it really, it really does. does. It really does. I don't know, it's weird, dude. And it's weird. You know, there were times where we were, like, Mario and I were just like looking at each other, like, this is fucking sick. Like, this is, I don't know. I've got a really good feeling about this film, knock on wood, knock on wood. Uh, you know, exactly. Close, this could come back and totally backfire. Completely on us backfire that we're saying this right yeah, now on camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're completely saying this on camera. But, I, you know, at least, like, for me, you know, it's like, if you don't feel like your movie's going to be a hit, like, what, you know? I want this movie to be a hit. I'm looking to make big hits. I want to make big fucking hits. Hit movies, Hollywood blockbuster movies, baby. That's what I'm looking at doing. That's what I got to accomplish. Well, that's what I want to accomplish. That's what we want to accomplish with this movie. I feel like we have it, but like, you know, time to get real work done, which is in post-production. And, you know, we're looking at doing that and we're gonna do the best, our can, uh, the best we can to accomplish yeah. that and get that. Yeah. To get that. And I will say like, you know, throughout the shooting, like we had, people laughing you know like one-liners you know that from that the actors were delivering from the script like that people kept saying for the whole week like it was just you know whether it was watching the dailies or just like watching in you know real time like it, it just seemed like <clears throat> you could tell this is a movie where you know like it's gonna get a response yeah yes at <laughs> you know? the very least because it, it really to, did yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah because yeah, it really did yeah we had these natural reactions and, and, and like i feel like if, if you're not laughing on page while you're reading it you know or if you're not laughing on set you're probably not gonna be laughing in the editing booth or you're not gonna be laughing in the theater you know you're not and if you are you will be you know what i mean like you we will be laughing and you will be you know getting emotional or you will be getting intense like some there's some really intense scenes in here too like ooh, you know so yeah i mean i think that's what you really it's just you really um you feel it like we felt it uh, you know we could feel it and, yeah and you could and see it you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah so uh yeah we have a lot of those we had a lot of those moments we have a lot of those on, on that we captured and and you know putting it all together and everything working out the way it did you know it it um it is like magic really is like magic like putting together a movie is really it's like <laughs> it's a lot it's a complicated <laughs> thing man it's amazing so many different minds coming together oh man a lot of things did have to fall into place but we did it you know we did it <laughs> we really did it we did it so yeah i guess i feel like are we I think we've talked this thing to death. We did much. talk it to death. <laughs> yeah, like, but it we like, covered oh. it. I mean, it's exciting. We covered you know? it pretty well. I yeah, I'm really excited. I'm like, okay, now I gotta. We gotta cut, finish cutting the movie. We gotta cut the movie together, and uh, you know. Uh, but yeah, it, it is all in a good feeling and um, working hard. If you guys work hard, you can accomplish your dreams. But you gotta work hard, and you know, bring in a team. Never give up. Never surrender. <laughs> okay guys thank you guys so much for watching this section of the special features this is mario gaviano director of photography of simp this is tremaine hayho director writer producer extraordinaire and many other things of simp follow him like him subscribe yes, so like subscribe to mario <laughs> <laughs> follow like subscribe subscribe to hayho studios uh, follow Mario everywhere he goes. <laughs> just follow. Don't follow. Just follow him in real life. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, no, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy the movie.